Welcome, Devaney. <laughs> Welcome to Arizona State University. Welcome, with Here we become. are. <laughs> Hey, to be welcomed by you is the greatest treat, uh, but we should be the ones welcoming you, of course. How did you how did you research from the script uh, into the novel, or either okay, one or both? Okay. One of the exciting things about doing adaptations of um, of older material, I'm trying to recreate an older world, um, is you want authenticity of the older point of view, and so while in most writing copying other works and, and, and being influenced by other works and, and sort of transposing them is frowned on. It's considered plagiarism. Mm -hmm. It's career-ending. It's a scandal. It's the exact opposite with this kind of book, where as much stealing and adapting and fiddling with old things possible. Working with dead people does have its advantages. Um, I've been listening um, and reading many, many books set in the period of the second half of the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century. And one of the problems of the Victorian era, and I think it's a problem that we have in our day, is that they were very self-satisfied and impressed with themselves. And I listened to a lot of history and a lot of biography of people in that period. I really love reading about our War of Independence and what, lived, what, what led up to it and how that was perceived in England and the conditions in England leading to that. And so... Um, there were a lot of things I could add when I had to. So at a certain point, we decided we didn't want to put Chloe Seveny through and ourselves through the torture of no matter how great her British accent was. People would be saying, oh, it's Chloe Seveny, oh, her accent, oh, how dare they have an American playing this quintessential English part, you know. So we thought if we change the, the, her character, Alicia Johnson, to American from Connecticut, a Tory exile, mm -hmm. forced to leave, um, you know, avoiding being tarred and feathered. Um, and this is, this is something that happened. It's a really touching story. It also raised the stakes because in the book, the reason why Mr. Johnson can oblige his wife, Alicia Johnson, to break with Lady Susan is he threatens to settle in a country village for the rest of their days if she keeps seeing Lady Susan. And Alicia just dreads the, the idea of living in a country village, and so she must break with Lady Susan because of this. And in our film, the thread is Stephen Fry says, you know, we will go live in Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> I and love so that. I just love the it. fact that I sort of read all this, and I was just immersed, I was pickled in all the story of the Tories and the Loyalists and all that. And so whenever I could find something to plagiarize, I, I put it in. And but I, I had to adapt it and, and make it different. And then I, I'd sort of come up with a word or something and sort of research that. And so in the film, we had jokes about peace, but I didn't really know. <clears throat> if peace would be considered a, nov a novelty um, vegetable, vegetable <laughs> in that period. But it turns out that peas did come in first to France and royal circles in the 17th century. And plausibly, in sort of the country aristocracy in Britain, they would have still been considered a little bit um, odd. <clears throat> but novelty good. vegetable as a phrase is not 18th century, but to get the joke. So sometimes in the film, we just go for the laugh. How jolly. Tiny green balls. What are they called? Peas.